What's the story in Morning Glory? What's the word? Hummingbird. Thank you so much for clicking on my channel and for joining me for this review of 90 Day Fiance Season 9, Episode 15, Bilal and Shaida. So we are days away from the wedding. The prenup is still undecided. So Shaida wants to have a meeting with her soon-to-be mother-in-law. So Bilal makes that happen. He makes the arrangements for that. The mother-in-law comes over and uh, the mother-in-law and Shaida sit down for a conversation. Bilal is not there. So Shaida talks about how she really admires um, the mother-in-law's marriage to Bilal's father and that because it lasted a lifetime um, I think Bilal's father has passed away and um, that she says she really wants to have like an old school type of marriage because that's what she herself is used to and that she sees a prenup as a sign that one partner doesn't trust the other so the mother-in-law says that according to a law all agreements have to be put in writing okay I understand that part but I'm thinking all agreements have to be put in writing. And when it comes to marriages, um, the writing is the license. You know, when both of you sign the license, um, not necessarily a prenuptial agreement. I don't think, to me, that's not my interpretation of all agreements have to be put in writing. It's like by a prenup. I'm thinking we both sign a, a marriage license. So... The mother-in-law says that um, Allah has put the male as the head of household and that women can lead from behind because it is really important to uh, leave a man with his manhood. So that makes me think of, you know, like this fragile, the fragility of, 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 of the man's manhood. I, I'm not buying that. I am not part of that school because what about the fragility of the woman's woman of the female's womanhood? Like I don't understand. Women have to be strong, especially, you know, women of color. We always have to be so strong to handle everything. But then we need to be very sensitive about, you know, the the man's manhood and we need to protect it. And we need to make him feel that he is still, you know, um, in control of things, that he is ahead of the household, that we can't, you know, mess with how fragile his manhood is. I don't have time for that. I don't agree with that. And I don't like that. Um, so... This thing of letting your husband or making your husband believe that he's the leader, but you're the one really controlling the situation. You know, he's the head, but you're the neck kind of thing. Um, I don't see anything wrong with a woman being in charge. And I know that's probably going against their religion or going against a certain cultures, but I don't see a problem if in some relationships, the woman is the head of the household and the woman is the one that makes the decisions. I'm not saying that every single relationship has to be that way, but I don't see anything wrong if it was that way. So just because you're born with a certain anatomy automatically by default, you're the one that runs the show. Yeah, I don't think so. So um, the mother-in-law tells Shaida that being right is not the most important thing and that she needs to figure out how to make it work and how to bring peace to her relationship. So Shaida becomes very emotional and um, she says that she was doing the opposite of what she should have been doing. And the mother-in-law says that Bilal has been, has been very guarded with his heart, but within the past two years, he has let down some of that guard, meaning that maybe Shaida has kind of softened him up. He's willing to open up his heart now a little bit more willingly that now that he's met Shaida and the mother-in-law says that um oh and then Shaida says that she feels emotional because it hurts her to think that she may have been the demise of their relationship why would you think that why would you think that Shaida what have you done to make you believe that you have you may have been the demise of your relationship you're the one that it seemed like, you know, you gave all your trust in him. You sacrificed so much for him. You left an entire life behind to be with him. But somehow you are the cause of the problems in your relationship. It's got nothing to do with him um, deceiving you about where he lived, deceiving you about what kind of car he drove making you sign a prenuptial agreement, bringing up the prenuptial agreement in moments when y'all are supposed to be having, you know, a romantic time together, bringing up contracts and all of this uh, during times when y'all are supposed to be carefree and, and just, you know, having a good time. Um, getting on your case about, you know, where you put the silverware. Okay. 
it makes me really sad that if if anything, at most, they have both contributed to the demise of the relationship. And Shaida should not feel, she, she should not carry the burden of being the one solely responsible for any problems in their relationship and letting Bilal go scot-free. So later on, Shaida and Bilal have a conversation and Shaida says that she is willing to submit and she was willing to agree to the prenuptial agreement that she's ready to sign it. So when she seems willing to sign their prenuptial agreement, Bilal then offers to put in the yoga studio in their prenuptial agreement. Um, and so then Shaida kind of gives herself a pat on the back because she says, so when I agreed with him, when I went along with his plan, when I let him believe that he was leading, then he went ahead and gave me what I wanted. So in a way, you know, he was the head and I was the neck kind of thing. I was still controlling the situation without making it obvious that I was controlling the situation. I was still able to control him um, in a way that he didn't know that he was being controlled. So she feels really good about that. Like, you know, her womanly powers has given her the ability for her to ultimately get what she wanted at the end without, and he's still thinking that he's the one in control and he's the one making all of, all of the decisions. Well, that's all cute, Shaida, that he was going to include your yoga studio in the prenuptial agreement. Um, I'm assuming that he was going to include it under the terms that you wanted. I'm assuming that, and that it wasn't like he's going to include it, but then change the terms into something that will be more favorable for him. So Shaida then says that uh, she does want a clause in their prenup about children. And so this is when she's like, she's not going to play the neck. She's going to play the head. She's going to tell him exactly what she wants and let him know that this needs to be in their prenuptial agreement, that they will try to have a child or that they will have a child before she turns 40. And so then he goes into this whole thing about, you know, when it comes to having children and conceiving, you don't know how long it's going to take. And she's like, I get all of that. I'm just saying that we need to start trying so that hopefully we can have a child before I turn 40 instead of just putting it off, putting it off, putting it off. And so he ultimately, he says, um, I guess so. He starts off by saying, okay, yeah, I guess so. And then she says, no, I need a clear and direct answer. And I'm like, girl, you're taking all of this control. Now you're being very, um, heavy handed now. Um, what about this whole thing of, you know, letting him, you know, keeping his fragile manhood and making him feel like he's making all the decisions. So like, well, you're picking and choosing when you're the neck and when you're the head and all of this. So then she said, then he says, um, so then she tells him, I need an answer. Yes or no. Are we going to try for a child before I turn 30? Yes or no. And so he finally concedes and says, yes, because he wants to compromise with her. He says, you know what? She was willing to compromise with me by signing the prenuptial agreement. It's only fair that I compromise with her. So he's going to go ahead and agree to having a possible um, child with her. And that's also going to be in the prenuptial agreement. And so, like I said before, maybe Bilal just isn't the marrying kind. I think he's had one or two failed marriages. He's got this fear of women taking advantage of him. Maybe he just shouldn't get married. You know, just go on and date. You know, do whatever you want to do, but just date and don't get married because he's making, he's turning something. I mean, it's, marriage is definitely a contractual agreement and it's definitely, um, there's some business involved in marriage when it comes to a lot of stuff, but um, he can, he really sucks the romance out of marriage <laughs> this Bilal guy he really sucks the romance out of it I mean this is like all business no pleasure this is all about contracts it's just and I wonder if that's how it's going to be for everything where everything has to be in writing and everything has to be negotiated and it's always going to be like a tip for tell well if you get this and I need to get that if I give up this you got to give up that I'm like god maybe you should have been an attorney Bilal maybe that's was your true calling was to be an attorney so it seems like Shaida is very very happy because her yoga studio is going to be included hopefully under her terms um, and then they're also going to include the fact that they're going to try for a baby so I guess talking to the mother-in-law worked in her favor you know when you she learned to appear to submit, you know, she got more of what she wanted. So I guess it's a win-win for her all the way around. Thank you so much for joining me in this review. I really do appreciate it. On your way out, please don't forget to rate the video. And if you like this content, please subscribe and I'll definitely talk to you later. Bye.